Ladies and gentlemen of Knucklehead Nation, I bring to you Edgar Barbary. All right, man, let's get a little background. Well, uh, were you in the martial arts as a kid? Just boxing. I was more like a boxing fan. Um, I didn't really know too much about like kickboxing, Muay Thai, any of that stuff. More like karate, I was aware of it. I tried it out, but it didn't work out too good. The sensei would never show up type stuff. So just kind of did boxing a little bit in third grade. Got in trouble for uh, not doing my homework. Told the teacher straight up, like, I got to go box. Like, I can't be doing my homework. So I got in trouble for that. Took me out. And then ever since then, just kind of got caught up with the hands and stuff. That's cool. Uh, did you watch boxing as a kid? Like, was that something that you watched? Or uh, you just practiced? I was kind of like in the background watching. Like, I'd go with my pops and stuff. I remember watching like the Trinidad and Oscar De La Hoya fight. I watched that one. I, um, Dang, how old does that put you at? I have no idea. How old are you now? Oh, how old am I? I'm 27. Dude, that was 1999. Yeah, see, so. that was a while yeah, ago. You were so like I remember maybe that. 10 years old yeah, when that fight came out. So, it was a while ago, but. I don't know, boxing just kind of always like, I don't know, had this like special something in my heart and then like the Rocky movies, all that shit was tight, so I just kind of fell in love with it. All right, so tell us about the yard, man. What makes you, what makes you guys so tough? You got some killers here. Uh, I mean, honestly, if you walk in, when you walk in here, just right away, you can kind of just feel it. It's kind of grimy, it's like a little grimy area. Like it's not state of the art or nothing like that, man. We work with what we got. And everybody just comes in to work hard, you feel me? Like, there's no anything, there's no diva, there's no drama. Everybody just comes in, takes a whooping or gives a whooping, yeah. leaves, come back, and they do it again every day, you know? So that's just kind of the mentality that we have right here. It's just a, a family, it's like a squad, and everybody just rides for each other, you feel me? You guys seem to come to the fight just like extra hard. Yeah, yeah. Like, you got like and Eugene Provincio yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> and Kovalev, and yeah. you guys just seem mean when you get there. Yeah. Yeah, and, uh, and this last, like, this last event really showed. Like, yeah, you guys all performed really well. Yeah, so yeah, I don't know what it is. I think if you look up anything that has to do with the yard, I'm sure you get like everything pops up. Joe Schilling, right? And then you see his fight, see his story, and that alone will get you a little bit crazy. You feel me? Like so, me Joe Schilling used to train here. Yeah, Joe Schilling trains here, and I okay. mean, like we will. He put the name out basically, you know what I'm saying? For the oh, yard, okay. he got the name out there, he's a, he's a big star. Yeah, I'm a I, I'm kind of like new to like Muay Thai kickboxing, yeah, yeah. so, so I mean, I'm not like George over here who knows yeah, all this yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, no, dude. So Joe's a man. You want to yeah. see a badass? Like, yeah. you want to feel unstoppable? Go watch some of Joe Shelley's fights? Dude, that guy's a beast. Dude, he seems really cool. I see him on Joe Rogan's show. Yeah, so. dude, he's so dope. Like, but he's the meanest looking guy I've ever seen, right? So, like, I've never said, like, oh, I'm scared of this fool, I'm scared of that fool. But Joe's kind of one of those that's like, all right, I'm just kind of watch this fool a little bit, see what's up, you know? Like, yeah. he looks like a mean guy, but he's really dope. So, right now, are you a fan of, like, pro MMA or kickboxing? Yeah, or? yeah. I mean, I'm into, the, I'm more into, like, just the UFC in general, or Bellator, MMA. Um, since that's what, like, they're doing now, like, Joe's making the transition to Bellator, and we got a couple guys, Army D-Rod, he just uh, fought for the Contender Series, um, so, and then Bamba, he's out on Bellator as well, so, I mean, that's kind of where everybody's at right now, and then, of course, we got Natalie Killface Morgan, she's, like, the kickboxing Muay Thai star right now that's still doing it there, and then she had, she just had a title fight in MMA, so, she's kind of a fan of everything. That's cool. But, I say what I like go out of my way to watch more. It's like boxing in MMA. All right, you gonna watch tonight's fight, Porter and tonight, Spence? We got Spence. Yeah, uh, Errol's gonna catch it. I'm gonna be at work, but I'm gonna try and catch it. I don't know. It's gonna be a good fight, though. Yeah, that's the it's one. It's gonna be a good fight. It, that 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 seems like it's gonna be good, but I think Spence takes me. Yeah, well, I mean, they both come out to fight, so. Yeah, Porter. Kinda, Porter's yeah. such a tough individual. Yeah. So. All right, man. Before we get into Saturday night's performance, I have to bring up that we're just 11 months out. Of fighters at four when you had your war with Daniel Arbahan. Yeah. All right. In a year that was full of tremendous fights, it was a back and forth battle, and it was deemed the fight of the year by Fighters Red. Yeah, yeah. My question is, uh, when getting ready to, do you have to put do you, when getting ready for a fight? Do you think about putting on a show, or or do you just care about getting the W? Uh. So I think it all goes together. Like. I work hard for one, like I come in here and I train, I know I got this fight. And of course that one was a rematch, you know, and 
I got the W, the first one. I know you're gonna come out, he's a tough guy. But I always feel like I'm the show. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, it doesn't matter where I'm at on the card, like, I'm gonna come and I'm gonna bring it. So, if I gotta steal the show, whatever that may be, like, that's just my mentality. You know, I gotta come out, I gotta bring it, and just try to come out and get the W. Yeah, I like that. Fights, you know? That was the first time I ever saw you fight, and what was really impressive was like when you guys were going back and forth, is your your facial expression doesn't change. Yeah. You stayed kind of focused. And what keeps what keeps you with that composed? Is that just from extra training, like when you train, or your uh, composure seems to be like one of your best assets? So the way I the way I go about fighting, the way I went about it, like I said, I researched Joe and just kind of listened to a lot of videos, and that's just one thing that they that uh, I took from one of these videos, saying like you gotta have a good poker face. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Can't let people know when you're hurt, when something uh, landed pretty good. You know what I mean? You just kind of. <laughs> You stay emotionless and you just keep coming forward. Yeah. So I think that uh, you just kind of go with the punches and if they don't hurt, there's no reason to make an expression. You feel me? Like, just keep coming and try to hit your targets and that's just kind of what I try to do. Yeah, it was, it was surreal watching, almost like like like, like the Iceman. Like, right. like when Stone Cold Steve yeah, Austin, yeah. when he got his name, you got it from the right. Iceman. Yeah. And that's what I thought. I was like, man, this guy is a killer, dude. Yeah. Even though he ended up taking you down in that fight, you, you guys were back and forth standing up and watching it back, I thought you were getting the better of him actually yeah. standing up yeah and uh but one thing i noticed is in that fight you just didn't go to the body enough you guys right, kind of right. like head hunted uh, do, is that something that you changed because in this last fight you, you went to the body and that's huh. what got your opponent so so i was uh kind of like getting a little buzz right in the mma scene and freaking uh, kickboxing scene and i had just took uh i took the arpa home fight for the state title and the fighters rep, cruiserweight title. And uh, honestly, I just wanted to get a knockout because I've been winning by decisions and it was all cool. But I was trying to make that next step, you know? I'm trying to figure out what I could do to put somebody away, you know, get my name up there. Because that's what it seems that everybody likes, right? So, of course, I came out just trying to throw hands. Like, that was the goal. I was like, I'm going to work on my cardio. I'm just going to throw as hard as I can and land. And whatever happens, happens. You know, it was just kind of one of those. It was uh, probably the best I ever felt because I didn't have no worry. I wasn't worried or concerned too much about getting taken down. Somebody I had already fought, I know it was going to be in my face. So it was just kind of, I already knew what I was getting myself into. I was just kind of really excited for it. Um, and then the fight before that, it was a heavyweight title fight, kickboxing against this guy Lucas Drew. He was like 15 and 2 or something like that. I was 3 and 0. Uh, went out there, we were just scrapping it out. You know, he just happened to land a good knee to the liver and I couldn't recover. Oh, okay. Like, that's just all it was. Bigger guys, you know, they got a little bit more reach. Yeah. You got to crowd the space, and that's just something you're susceptible to. Yeah, you're uh, a tough motherfucker, but you're kind of small for heavyweight. Yeah, as far yeah. as, like, stat height. Stat yeah. 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 So you just got to be smart about it, you know what I mean? Like, use your speed, try to make him fight dirty like we did uh, this last fight. Just kind of stayed in his face. They didn't give him the space to use his reach or any of that. And like, we were just trying to hit whatever was open. Like, I couldn't tell you that I was thinking, you know, I'm gonna go to the body and do all that. I just hit whatever was open. And then when I went back and looked at the film, I was like, damn, that shit looks tight. I look nice out here throwing up, down, changing levels, everything, you know? So, at the time, I didn't realize what was going on, but when I saw it, I was like, oh, that was a good showing, you know? All right, man. Overall, what's your experience been with Fighters Red, man? Fighters Red's good. I've seen the promotion grow, like, I, I think uh, I've met George when he was an announcer. He had a car, or he was at a car at Fighters First, they called it. I believe it was. It was at Adrenaline. And then uh, I had some MMA ones that were pretty good. Got the title shots and all that. And then uh, I just seen the promotion grow. They made the jump to kickboxing. You know, they're always hitting me up to if I want to scrap or try to get the best for their, uh, for their fighters. And the promotion is growing. I uh, actually tell them that this last one I felt was probably one of the ones that ran the smoothest, you know? I feel the same uh, way. It was smooth, it was organized. They didn't even, I, uh, I saw, what was it, the post-fight interview, his fight? Um, talking about that uh, you guys put it together kind of last minute. And I was like, I couldn't tell that it was cut last minute. It was like pretty just smooth, every smooth sailing. Everybody kind of just knew what it was, so yeah. it was cool to me. 
Dude, you're, you're, you're one of my favorite fighters to watch. So every time George talks about a new event, I'm like, when are you going to bring Barbary yeah. back? Yeah. And one of the things he talks about, it's so hard to get heavyweights in the kickboxing scene. Yeah. There's just not a whole lot of them here in Southern California. Right. But uh, every time we get a chance to see you, I know I get excited, man. Yeah. All right, man. So here we are. Fighters Rep 8. It was a sensational performance uh, where you overwhelmed your opponent. Did you work on anything specific for this fight? Uh, kinda, yeah. Like, so one was mainly just getting my cardio up. Like, I had, I had consistently been working on my cardio, but I think this is the best that I had it. For one, and then just going back to finding my balance. You know, making sure that my punches were straighter, sharper. You know, not leaning, falling off balance. Um, and then just putting in rounds, dude. I was in here those days. I was in like 15 rounds straight going 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 you know and then fresh guys every day um i got to work with some of the pros you know felt that pressure too so that's good and it was just kind of like dirty boxing that's how i was able to drop them i was able to get the back of the head and got through to the liver got on the drop them but um just that pressure that's really all that we try to uh work this last time was pressure 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 and just output that actually, that actually brings me to my next question is, uh, George says it's hard to match you with, with, with heavyweight. Is it hard to find sparring partners to spar with that'll push you? Um, so I don't think it's too hard because we got a lot of guys here. So I just, I work with everybody, but the difference is that I change the mentality, right? My mentality comes in like, I gotta get these guys to work on my level. I can't work down to them. So I make them work whatever I gotta work. And then if they need a break or something, then okay, we get somebody else in. Like if they can't keep up, we get somebody that does keep up, you know? And then uh, it just works your technique, we work technique. So I just work with everybody. I get different styles, you know, different stances. Everybody has different techniques. So it's just, uh, it's fun, you know, just keep it new every day. Uh, was there a point where you knew you were gonna stop your opponent in the fight? So uh, I was actually telling uh, my teammates during the week, we were getting ready for the weight cut, and I was like, I wanna get a, t a TKO, like I need the rep to stop that. I'm just trying to make this guy quit. I wanna come out here, I wanna run with this guy, make him keep up, and if you can't keep up, I wanna make him quit. And that was the goal, like once I started landing, like I said, I just kept going, it was just, that's it, that was his mission, just go, go, go until the ref stops it. Yeah, that was the plan. With all due respect to your opponent, I was, when, when you first, he got his first standing eight count, yeah, yeah. he looked like he wanted out. Yeah. Like, and I could be wrong, I'm not in there fighting. <laughs> yeah. He looked like you were, your body work was really getting to him. And he toughed it out, and he, you yeah. know, he, he stood in there and he kept fighting, which is really good of him, but... Uh, it, it was just amazing to see you put it all together because you're coming off two straight losses. Did you feel the need to get the win to get back on track? Yeah, well, if you include with the Arpa home loss, that's like three. Okay. You feel me? Three in a row. So, yeah, uh, we had like a little losing streak here at the gym, too. So, there's a lot of pressure I put on myself. Like, we got to get a win for, you know, for the gym, for myself, like for the coaches, you know. So, I just really wanted to make the gym proud and, the, and uh, my coaches proud. So yeah, there was definitely that need that I gotta come out here, I gotta win, so that's what that mentality was. Like, come out here and just make him run with you, make him keep up, and if he's on your level, then he's on your level, if he's not, then oh well, you know? Yeah. Too bad. That's what it was. Uh, where do you go from here? What's your next fight going to be? Another kickboxing event or back to MMA? Or? Uh, yeah, I think we want another another kickboxing fight, hopefully a heavyweight. Maybe George can make his own BMF belt. You know what I'm saying? I'll be down for that. Or a Kumite belt, something like that. You feel me? Because I mean, I'm the I'm the little heavyweight taking on all these big dudes always. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So might as well. You want a BMF belt. Yeah, you, you want your you own belt. Yeah. yeah. And then after that, you know, maybe we'll try to make the cut down to 205. For sure, but whatever. I'm so ready. You know. you're, you're going to try and hop on this December 21st? Yeah, if it, works, if, all, if it all works out, I'll be down for that. You know, as long as we get something good. we got to see what my coaches are doing. I know some of them got like the case. It's, you know, it's towards the end of the year, so they might need some time off. So you got to see with that. But if it works out, definitely be on that card for sure, man. All right, man. Before we wrap up, I got to ask you about your teammate, Kovalev, man. Yeah, yeah. He fought Gabriel Silva, who by himself isn't a big name. Yeah, right. But everyone knows it's Anderson Silva's sure. kid. So yeah. the pressure had to be on him. Yeah. I couldn't believe how well Kovalev came out yeah, yeah, and fought. Yeah, he's a gangster, bro. I told George... <laughs> In between rounds, because I was, I was running back and forth, yeah. I told him, I go, I don't think Kovalev cares whose kid this is. Yeah. 
You know, it was just amazing. What did you think of his performance, man? Um, so he just kind of walked in here one day. You know, he's like, hey man, you want to work? I was like, all right, like we'll see, what's up? And he was just, he was real tough. Came out throwing bombs, you know. And then I saw his last fight at Fighters Red, the one before this one. And he was just straight gangster, hands down, throwing bombs. You know, stop the kid. And yeah, when he came out for uh, after our fight, we were talking after my fight, we were talking a little bit like. Doesn't matter how big they are, huh? just throw hands. I was like, that's it, bro. And then he just came out here, you know, stood in front of him. Was, I actually thought he, he she should have got the fight, but I thought it was two to one round, but you know, it is what it is. It's a tough guy. Um, but yeah, man, he's he's a G, you know what I mean? Yeah. He comes out and he brings it to every time. Yeah, I definitely, I wasn't able to score the fight because yeah. I, was, I was photographing, so it's hard to actually keep track. I thought he won the first two rounds. Yeah, yeah. But I just thought he was like I say, when you're photographing, it's hard to know yeah, exactly yeah, what's sure. going on. Um, is there anybody you want to thank? Any sponsors or anything before we go? Uh, any your coaches? I, honestly, I just want to thank all my teammates here at the yard, my coaches, and George, obviously, for you know having me on the show. And then all of you guys, man, in the background, making all this stuff happen. Like, this is tight. You know, you guys are going to go pro Ami. It's kind of like UFC level type stuff. You know what I'm saying? You guys are giving the sneak peeks, all the interviews with the fighters. So I think all that stuff's tight, man. I appreciate you guys giving us the exposure and the chance to voice our opinion. You feel me? All right, man. Well, thanks for joining us today. All right, brother. Have a good one, man.